Yo, welcome guys to a, another replay analysis, and today we're looking at a pro level Zerg versus Terran. I did not see this game, but apparently this game was played recently, and uh, uh, someone from my chat recommended me to watch this to check out what's going on here. They, they wanted to see this from the Zerg's perspective and just see how this see how this goes. Exact the the words exactly to quote him was, "I'm trying to adopt this playstyle. Can you break it down? Go over this replay for us, please." And I'm interested, so let's check it out. Rogue is amazing. Rogue is like fucking pr one of the best Zergs there is you'll ever see. So hell yeah, boys! Let's uh, let's see how Rogue plays this shit. Yeah, and I have I have no idea how this is gonna look. I like I said before, I have I have not seen this particular game, so we're all in for a treat. <coughs> so so far, everything looks pretty normal. Rogue is doing a half-assed... Or just joking. Uh, for some reason, I thought he didn't have a double stack. Notice notice how he's got double drones on every close patch, guys. And notice how his far patches have one, one, two, one. This man respects a good economy. Look at him stacking those drones up. He's not letting his drones run around like idiots. My man. That is a 16 hatch. <laughs> Got a couple more drones coming out. Nothing too crazy. I fucking love it. Rogue's leaving a second overlord in front of his base. Hell yeah, dude. Getting ready for those potential bunker rushes. I fucking love it. Uh, see, like, Rogue actually is opening up the same way I feel like I like to open up in this matchup so far. I love it. Makes me happy. Makes me feel like what I'm doing is also good. I hate it whenever I watch Zergs, like, fly their second overlord just directly across the map right away. Or they fly, like, directly to the left or some shit. Uh... Whenever you see a Zerg do that in a tournament, it's usually because they studied their opponent and they their opponent is prone to doing that. But whenever you see someone do it in ladder, that's especially not even at pro level, but they're like, we're talking like 4.5k MMR or something, or like 3.9k MMR. It's because they saw someone do it in a tournament and they think that's just what you do. When in reality, the only reason why the person in the tournament did it is because they studied their opponent who is prone to proxying in that area or something. So it's not the same thing. So I, I really like this. This is like, if he were to get proxied, he could always hide the overlord right here and not die. And then he would also see it before it became a problem. I love it. Second OV, uh, so what do you say? Second overlord is better left in front and not looking for a proxy. Interesting. 100% yes. Because if someone proxies you, it's not a problem until the bunker is done. Think about it like this for a second, okay? Someone, people out there might not understand the timings on how this works. If someone proxies you and they build a bunker, it's not a problem until the bunker is done. But then when the bunker is done, it's a fucking problem. If they rush it as fast as they possibly can. <coughs> and if they don't rush it as fast as they possibly can and they wait, let's say they wait until they have seven marines and then they build a bunker. And, like, then, and then they walk over and try to like build a bunker and, you know set up then when they not when they have no marines but when they have like seven marines you're gonna have like queens by then and you'll also your first overlord by then should also see the fucking terran's base so uh, this is kind of weird though i'm not gonna lie this is actually kind of weird he's setting it to the back of the main i'm not too familiar with why the fuck he's doing that but yeah i love the second overlord though yeah, there's there's no downside to leaving your second overlord uh here at this point in time at all. <laughs> okay. Got two drones on gas. When did he take one off? Out of curiosity. He took one off at like 50 it looks like. This is what Dark does. I see Dark do this all the time as well. Yeah. Takes it off so early. Like, basically, as soon as the natural is, like, ready to go, he's already taking drones off the gas. 
It's definitely a mineral priority build, not a speedling priority. This means he's defensive at the opener at least. He's not going to be doing some type of aggressive timing to start the game off with. <clears throat> Very interesting. I don't I don't know. That that's a weird overlord to me. I mean, he'll see if something moves down the south side of the map, but he's blind if anything goes down the middle right now. Uh, super weird. He's got two queens. Taking a creep tumor and a... Inject. He's already got his third down so goddamn... When did he take his third, dude? My god, that's so fast. I love it. He took his third at 28. Supply. Right before Zergling speed. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. The second overlord is kind of poking forward a little bit. <coughs> I think he just assumes Hellion's already. This is what this would make sense for. He's spreading out overlords for Hellion defense. Uh, yeah, it's super interesting, man. Uh, you know what? Also, I have an idea. I have an idea. I think I understand why he did this. Let me tell you right now. I was thinking about I was like, well, do I really like what he just did here? And I was like, no, I don't really like it. But you know what? I, this is what I guaranteed happened. Listen to me. This overlord here was just a spotter in general to give him a little bit of a warning in case something comes to his base like a reaper or ev eventually like a hillion or something like that, which is fine. However, I guarantee... This is where studying comes in. Do I think you should do this every single game? No. Would I? Do I think if Rogue was here right now sitting next to me, do I think that uh, Rogue would say, oh yeah, just do this every game now, forever? No, he probably wouldn't say that. You know why he probably did this? He probably did this because he plays against Bion, and maybe or either that or he has studied Bion, because again, this is a tournament game. Players tend to check up on each other before they play each other in tournaments to see what their tendencies are like what their current up-to-date tendencies are. And I guarantee if you go back and watch some of Bion's games against Zerg recently, on this map in particular, I bet Bion opens up with double Marine and he tries to kill Overlords as they scout. So if I go back and I look at Bion's perspective now, I guarantee he goes Overlord hunting. Watch this. I bet he goes Overlord hunting. Double fucking racks. And then he, if an overlord popped in over here, there's a, ch a good chance he could have just killed the overlord straight away. Uh, so Bion, or uh, Rogue probably assumed Bion was going to do a build like that on this on this particular game. Where he's going to open up with an overlord killing party of marines. And uh, he did this in the purpose of just not losing the overlord. And then if, uh, here's the thing too, is if, uh, if no reaper scouts Bion's base. Or uh, sorry, if no reaper from Bion scouts Rogue's base. Well, there's a good chance that he's going for Marines and he's skipping the Reaper because otherwise he would have made a Reaper. So, I get it. I can think about it from Rogue's perspective. And, uh, yeah, he, this is a build that's literally just trying to not lose an Overlord. And it still will eventually scout to confirm shit, but he just doesn't want to lose an Overlord. So, I like it. And then he confirms everything and he gets out of there. And he has Overlord speed as well. Uh, so, he got Overlord speed, like, directly after... Uh, Zergling speed. And he, I don't think he ever took any guys off gas after he took guys off gas for speed. Yeah, I think he stayed on two guys on gas the entire time. And then he just got speed on overlords a little bit later. Yep. I like it. It's a safe build. It's a very, very, very safe opener. And the reason why as well, anyone out there who's like, well, w would this work on every single map, or why does it only work on this map? It really works on this map, and the reason why is because there's no cliff in the natural. There is no cliff in the natural you can hide on, like what most maps have. Most most maps would have like a cliff like right here that you could just hide on near the natural base. But this map doesn't. The only cliff you can hide on is way the fuck down here, which is really easy for Marines to kill your overlord. So that's why he probably respected that on this map in particular.
And now he knows it's a two on one. And he's making dr drones for now. He's got only a couple lings. He, uh, realistically, he doesn't even need lings yet anyways. I agree with what he's doing. He made a few in case a reaper happened. Because he doesn't know otherwise. But he's not making lings until right about 420, which I think is perfect. And the reason why is because if you make lings around 420, and you start making lings then, you get an amassed amount of lings right around 5 minutes. Uh, like, you'll be able to build up to a, a good amount of lings at like 5 minutes. And 5 minutes is right when the medevacs hit you. So, I love it. I think Rogue's... Uh, Response to this is perfect so far. I like it a lot. And then right now, about five minutes, is when 100% uh, he's going to be getting attacked. And that's more than a 2 one, one. That's, that, that's like... Or not... What the fuck was that? That's like awkward. He actually walked out with the Marines early before medevacs were out. It's kind of ballsy. Did Bion even scout before he chose to do that? That is fucking ballsy. I'm going to tell you right now, the reason why that's ballsy is because if Rogue was doing it all in, Bion would have just lost the game. And he didn't scout anything. I think he just assumed Rogue is going to play macro. And there's probably a high chance that's going to happen, but that's fucking so ballsy. That is like... There's no cover for these marines if they get fucked over right now. They cannot load up. But this does increase the speed of his timing. And it also increases the amount of his timing because he doesn't have to only bring what's in the medevac. So as you can see, he's got 15 marines here. Plus two hellions, plus two more marines. So he's got a little bit of a bigger army. Plus another two hellions here, again. Because <coughs> he's waiting for the final two. So he's actually got four hellions and 17 marines. Which is more than what two medevacs could hold by themselves. So this is actually a huge timing. This is a hellbat timing. This is pretty big. But if this would have died across the map, Beyond would have been fucked. So that's that's kind of kind of scary. He's so ballsy with these marines, dude. As yeah, he, they're going to die. That was a mistake by Beyond. He he just honestly in my opinion, he just threw the game. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If you like, that's fucking like him already walking across the map is ballsy, but he walked on fucking creep, and that is like asking to die. The only way that would have worked is if uh, Rogue didn't have uh, a good scout and you know didn't make units properly. But Rogue react Rogue reacted to this as if it were a two on one, and he made a safety bane nest just in case it was more. Like, you, you can tell he did be, here's Here's the thing. Let me tell you something really fast. Let me tell you something really fast. If you make a Baneling Nest or a layer one before the other, it kind of tells you what your goal is. And you can see he's got a lot of gas right now, right? He doesn't really have only, like, 75 gas and he throws down a Bane Nest or something like that. The faster a Zerg makes their Bane Nest, the more they're anticipating a something very aggressive like almost all in category like something super aggressive is happening if they make a faster bailing nest however rogue gets enough gas to make both a layer and a bailing nest simultaneously like right now you can see his resources are high uh for like the gas what is what i mean and he makes the bailing nest and the layer simultaneously so this is just something that I would say is is not necessarily a reaction to go Rogue needs a macro lesson. No, it's not it has nothing to do with that. Uh Zerg isn't like Terran and Protoss where they can't or mostly Terran. You can't always pump your units constantly because uh you're you're always waiting on larva injects a lot of times. So your money does ramp up a little bit compared to other races, unless you're like constantly cranking out mass queens or something. Which is kinda what he's doing too, but yeah. Uh like his macro is fucking flawless right now. Uh, but if a Zerg player goes for like a Bane Nest way earlier than this, then it means that he would have been anticipating like a, a Hellbat timing or something like that with the Marines. But because he went for a Bane Nest at the same time as a layer, it means that he's anticipating it's just going to be harass. Like it's just going to be a little bit of Marines and Medivac. Like a normal 2 on one more or less. 
But this is still useful. It's still a useful building. He just didn't rush it. So this is one of those moments where I would say, if Beyond didn't fuck this up, this could have actually potentially done a lot of damage. Like, I cannot believe he walked into it after he just got scouted as well. Beyond is nuts. Like, Beyond should have brought those medevacs right here right now. Dropped the Hellbats here. And then pushed in with, like, outside the creep with everything. Walking into the fucking army was just, like, the biggest waste. It, yeah, it didn't need to happen. This was suicide. The medevacs aren't even there yet, dude. That was... That was just too much. That was too greedy. Because uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if, if these... Like, this is going to set the pace for the game heavily. This is this is how pro games go. What's about to happen is literally going to set the pace for the entire game now. And if Beyond had landed his... Uh, his Hellbats, like, right back here. And then moved in with everything at once. Banelings are not ready yet. So I feel like this Bailing Nest was actually mildly late versus what Rogue is dealing with right now. Mildly late. Would, would I say that Rogue's going to die right now? Definitely not. I do not think Rogue at all is going to die right now. At worst case scenario, Rogue would just lose more lings than he wants to, and it would become a little bit inefficient with Larva. That's the worst case scenario for Rogue, because he has enough queens as well to make sure he doesn't die. There's, there's no fucking way Rogue is dying right now. It's just that... Bion, if this attack was set up properly, Bion could have actually traded maybe like 30 larva off of the Zerg or like 20 larva off of the Zerg. Like maybe he kills like 30 lings and then, you know, R Rogue has to make like more lings than he wants to. And then it wastes more larva from Rogue to not make drones instead. Because if you force a Zerg to make a Zergling, you indirectly kill a drone like that because they don't get two larva. They only get one larva per unit. So... Whenever you, you, every time you force a larva to be a military unit and not a drone, that's a drone they don't have at that point in the game. Uh, so this is just a missed opportunity for Bion, is all it is. This was uh, b too YOLO. And now, look at uh, Rogue's production, right? All drones. If these were Hellbats... Which they can be because he has an armory right now. This was a Hellbat timing, guys. If those were Hellbats with those Marines, and all those Marines were behind those Hellbats stimpacking, it would have forced Rogue to make more Lings than he would have made already. Like, this would have been another 18 Lings probably right here. Because he wasn't ready with Banes yet. And he would have had to have made Banes and stalled for a moment so his base doesn't die with his drones and shit. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, let's see what these do from this point on. Probably not much, though. Hellbats again. But now there's only two Marines in the Hellbats. It's no longer... I mean, that's kind of a cute move right there. Having four Hellbats and two Medivacs trying to do something with that. But yeah. There's just not much you can do at the moment. Rogue is amazing. He just scouts again for the second wave. And he actually caught it as it was on its way. Okay, that was maybe a... Uh that was uh, maybe an oversight. The reason why Rogue engaged that like that is because he was hoping to get do the same exact thing he did here a second ago. He was hoping to get on top of the Marines and the, a couple Hellions before the Medivacs arrived, but the Medivacs this time around were actually close enough. So that was actually good for Bion. Because, I mean, if, if Bion was really greedy with his aggression, and let's say the Medivacs were, like, over here, they were getting ready to drop the main, the Queens could have come back to the main base, wherever the fuck they are. Uh, where are the Queens? Oh, they're up here. The Queens could have come back to the main, or if the Medivac dropped here, even even better for, for Rogue, right? Um, but yeah, if they were out of position, obviously, th these things would have killed this entire army again, which would have been game over entirely. So nice job by Bion by regrouping. I'm surprised, I will say this, I am surprised by the lack of Baneling investment from Rogue. This is, a, this is another position... Where I would say Rogue is getting greedy. Rogue knows he's up against Hellbat Marine Medivac. And he's really trying hard to scout for continuously, continuous pressure. And I'm going to tell you right now 100%. If Rogue had scouted... Or uh, sorry, if Rogue had not completely shit all those Marines in front of his base right here earlier. He would have not gone for upgrade, 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 upgrade. All before he makes main links. He would not have done that. He would have probably gone for 
Banelings and Banelings Speed, and then eventually got some 1 1 upgrades, and then eventually got Burrow. He, there's no fucking way he would have done everything all at once. Uh, but he only, he only did all these upgrades before making Banelings at all because he feels so confident that he is so far ahead right now. So that, like, uh, normal Zergs, don't fucking do that. Like, if, you, if you're actually intimidated by your opponent's pressure and you don't get free Marines like that, and you do all these upgrades first, you will 100% die to a timing. Like, this is already going to be still somewhat close for Beyond to possibly do a lot of damage here because this is not enough Banes right now. But, I mean, Rogue does have a lot of gas income, and he's making more Banes every second. So he's th this is like... The Queens are going to have a little bit of a job to do here, but I, I do think Rogue will be fine. But he cut this really fucking close. I mean, it, it makes sense, though, that he did that because he got so far ahead. I just want you guys to know that he was ahead, which is why he chose to play it this way. There comes the Banes. He's trying to, like, surround the Hellbats and Marines. He gets some good connections. This army dies for Bion. And now, obviously, as you can see, because of the Queens and because of how the previous amount of how ahead he was, now he's super far ahead because he was able to squeeze out three base income with a fourth on the way, with all of his upgrades prior to his uh, Baneling investment. So he is in a... Rogue is in almost like an unlosable position right now. And that's what happens to you if you make a bad fight. It, it literally spirals out of control repeatedly. It, it just continuously keeps happening. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just... It's one of those things that it just... It's ca it cascades throughout the rest of the game. Now he's burrowing Lings around the map periodically for vision. Which is super nice. It's going to always be able to see where the turret is coming from. Every angle. It's really, 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 really good. Product like Drone-wise now, he just also saturated his fourth base after he killed that last army. So now he's on like a four base full economy versus a turret who's on three bases at this point. Which is, again, super nice. And behind this he's going mutas, which is... I would say really good. Mutas will sh like he already has good control of the ground anyways as it is. Mutas will just shut down more drops very easily. So, I mean, Rogue's position in this game is like fucking amazing. Uh right now. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> now, this is when Mutas come into play, right? Because now he's going to start dropping and avoiding the lings as much as possible. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, let's back it up for a second. Let's talk about this, because that was pretty uh, pretty slick, pretty technical, what just happened there. <clears throat> Notice that what Rogue does. It's a two-step process. <coughs> Number one is he runs lings around the map. And what does he do with those lings running around the map? He finds out where the Terran is at any point in time. Like, he's he knows where the Terran's pushing and shit like that. He just is fully aware of what's going on in this, in this position of the game. And behind this, he starts setting up Banelings right after to go around and he sees the third base he confirms there's a middle line here he confirms there's no type of a wall here in any way and then he you know he's scouting around both sides with lings here and there being super fucking annoying blocking the third making banes here and then more banes where the fuck are the banes there, there we go just like three fucking banes just three banes oh and then as the drop is happening, he uses... I honestly think he would have probably waited a little bit longer, but he probably initiated this because this was initiated by Bion. So he went, okay, you're going to drop me uh, on the right. Uh, how about at the exact same time on the left side? I just have a few Banes running your mineral line. And it's just a test. And if Bion had either a wall or if he... Again, but again, uh, Rogue just confirmed there was no wall. But if there was if there was a wall for uh, for Bion there, that would this wouldn't be a problem. And if there was any type of units here, this wouldn't be a problem either. But it clearly is because there was no wall. So that's a bunch of SVs that just died, right? 
And now, Beyond is... This is kind of just like... A little bit of a recipe of disaster. Just because Beyond is still... Being so fucking aggressive. He's he's multitasking like crazy. Oh, and when you, the more you multitask, yeah. the more problems can start to happen. And players like Beyond can handle it. More than seven. It is, Kybert. Thank you very much for the eight. Thank you very much for the sub, dude. Players like Beyond can obviously handle multitasking. It's just that this is such a small investment for Rogue. It's not even like a big deal if it doesn't even work. And it does work because... Think about it like this. There's also a chance now. Like, let me just explain something really quick. This is mindset of a player. Like, listen to this really fast. Beyond pushes right here, right? And you gotta realize that if Beyond pushes right here, this is probably not his entire army. This is just a harassment. He's still making units at his base the entire time that he's doing this, and he's probably rallying them all right here. This is what Terrans do. They rally their units in their doorway. That way, they can pr protect their main and their natural from run buys. And then if they need to, they can run quickly from there to the third base. That's just what Terrans do. Uh, it protects them from random run by garbage. However, Byun was just scouted earlier by Rogue, and he knew that and Rogue knows there's no wall there, so Rogue decides to first attack this side because it, most Terrans have the concept of standing in the doorway with their units at this point in time. So when Rogue does this right here and attacks this base here with these banes, there is a chance now that since Beyond doesn't have a wall here still, and it's kind of like, well, fuck me, right? That sucked. Beyond might now move what is in the doorway down to here. And then Rogue follows it up with a timing going here. So I would not be surprised now if units are walking down to this area to go protect that area. Because it's open and exposed and it just took damage. And now, right after that, Rogue goes into his fucking main base. This is literally Rogue playing the shit out of Beyond right here. Uh, <clears throat> he is manipulating his movement. And that is really fucking, you know, that, that this is obviously a reason why he's such a fucking good Zerg player. Uh, and, it, and then Beyond obviously catches it too. But then Beyond's like, oh my fucking god. Okay, I just moved. I literally just came down here to protect this because this is late. And the, the best way to describe what we're seeing here is Rogue is really good at knowing how to play a game from a position that he's already ahead in. Some people are not very good at that. But this game in particular, Rogue is really fucking good at playing a game when he's already ahead at the game. Like, he knows how to maintain a lead really fucking well. Because uh, these are small investments that are doing so much damage. And then now behind this again, he has mutas that can completely deny these medevacs. And there's another little run by, right? Another He's testing the waters just to see if the wall is fully done yet and what he can do. And there's a good chance... There's a good chance he will not initiate this until some type of multitasking starts to happen. So he just scouted there was the drop on top right still with his lings. So now he's going to initiate this. And at the same time he initiates this, he'll move this in to the third base. The only problem with this now, though, is that Beyond just made a sensor tower. So now this is a good chance that this might not work anymore. There's a chance it might not work. He might still go for it, but yeah. I mean, Beyond's going to know now because he's got a fucking sensor tower. So yeah, Rogue decides, you know what? No, 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 no. I take it back. I'm not going to oh, do that. Oh, yeah. Now the Mutas are uh, going to add a whole other element of problem here because Mutas are in the main base. There was literally just one turret and there is nothing else. And Beyond's got everything out on the map somewhere else. He's got shit in the middle of the map between his bases. He's got shit over here dropping. Most Zergs, I'm not going to lie, I feel like would have killed the Medivacs first. Def done the defensive option first and then progressed to go the aggressive option. I think Rogue is 100% confident though that he can deal with these two Medivacs with this new army that is just chilling at home. Which he totally can, as long as he moves his units properly. Uh, so I think Rogue doesn't give a shit. He's like, yeah, you want to drop me? I'll stop you with queens and lings again. I don't actually give a shit. Uh, meanwhile, he's denying the fourth base right now. And he's also denying the main base, more or less, with the economy. Because the mutas are just fucking shit up in the main. And then th this is crazy, because if you think about it like this. Rogue is forcing a situation right now. That is, uh, he's forcing Beyond to react to the Mutas. 
Beyond has to send Marines back to deal with the Mutas. And what's happening at the exact same time is Rogue is now also engaging the army of Beyond at the same exact time with Ling Bane on the outside. But that is now split amongst itself because it has to deal with the Mutas. And the Mutas could literally just run away now. Because they don't want to fight the Marines that have now made this army substantially weaker to the Ling Bane. So that was a great trade. Because that well, all that did right there was that was a trade for unit and unit. They both lost units there. However, one player is maintaining a better economy than the other as a result of all of this. And Beyond can never keep up with Rogue in terms of his economy at this point. Like, it's so hard for Beyond to keep up. And that all that means now is, is the second time Rogue attacks Beyond in the next 30 seconds or 45 seconds, it's going to be really soon. What Rogue could do is he could literally make a bunch more Lings right now, turn all his existing Lings out here already into Banes, and then just ram the shit in, in Beyond's face, and then Beyond will die. Because Beyond is actually falling so far behind now. And Beyond just ends up GGing instead, because he knows he's fucking dead. That's exactly what would happen after this, though. Like, Beyond actually got played really hard by Rogue here. And honestly, again, from pro perspective... This happened because, number one, Rogue is really good at playing from a position which he's already ahead in. That is the, bi the biggest reason why this game went this way. And the second biggest reason, the, w the result of why that happened, is because Beyond fucked up his first attack and threw away all of his Marines pretty poorly. And then the rest of the game was just following that, that mistake. So, Beyond probably th kicking his own ass right now being like why the fuck did I do that horrible attack with my marines early on I should have maybe like what I was saying grouped up outside the creep and then went in I shouldn't have walked on creep without any medivacs there that was silly because he was literally like two seconds from doing the timing either way he was right there but he just walked in a little too early and then he was like oh well medivacs let's go home now because uh or let's leave this area because there's no way this works now so anyways Good job by Rogue. That was a super clean game, honestly. Very clean. I like this opener. Rogue's opener was... Uh, I feel like the Overlord positioning was meta for the map and also for his opponent. But his build in general with the Link Speed, Overlord Speed, super fast third. I really like it. That was actually a super clean build. And then, uh, again, any Zerg out there, I just want you guys to... I want to make sure you guys understand this. If you like, think you want to copy this build, do not, I repeat, do not... Do what be, uh, what uh, what Rogue did here, where you go for double upgrades and burrow and bane speed before you make a single baneling, because if you do that, the only way that works is if you already killed their units with the zerglings. Like if they ran into your base with six hellions and all the hellions died, or if what if what Beyond just did, if they ran into your base with marines and the marines just died, if something died, like if the whole opening harassment army of your opponent's uh, units died. Then you can do, do all your upgrades first before you take Banes for safety. But if they don't lose units, if let's say they actually have... What if what if Rogue decided to do all those upgrades first and then eventually start making Banelings? And when that timing right here happened where he, you know, uh, he had Lings on the both sides and then oh, Banes ran into it. Yeah. What if at that point in the game... Still enjoying the stream. Thanks much. Yeah, Huggazark. Thank you for the 21, man. Much love. What if at that point in the game, when uh, when when Rogue had all the upgrades with his gas invest and gas gas investments there, and he only had like five banes trying to engage the Terran? What if Terran also had like six Hellbats and like thirty Marines instead of like four Hellbats and like sixteen Marines? Because that would have that's actually what it would have been like. Like he would have fucking died. Rogue would have died if he would have waited that long to make banes and then suddenly. There is so much DPS there for Terran. And then when, when Zerg tries to engage with like seven slow Banes or like five slow Banes, Terran has so many units that he can just easily split up a little bit or even just focus fire the Banes down. So don't fucking do the upgrades if you haven't killed their army. Instead, what you should do is probably make like eight Banelings first and then take the upgrades and then go back to making Banes again. So that way, if your opponent does a timing to you with the units that have not died yet that have just been amassing themselves, you don't die there. Uh, that's the only way you would play this game differently if uh, you uh, didn't have the particular situation that Rogue did here where he killed all the Marines. But anyways, guys, this is a really cool game by Rogue. It was it was honestly a standard version of Ling Bane Muta, and it was really fucking clean. Really nice build. 
But thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed my breakdown of it. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then. Much love, take it easy, and peace. See you guys.